Your message said mission accomplished. Exactly. Well, that was quick work. I mean, I, how long have you been there? Six weeks? I, I thought that it would take at least a few months. Well, I thought so too. But then last Monday, I took an envelope back to Charlie's office. He closed the door and started asking me about myself, where I grew up, school, and eventually if I was attached. <laughs> That's Charlie, subtle as an armored division. Anyway, we uh, talked for a few more minutes. We were sitting on the sofa in his office, just chatting. And then his phone rang. But before he picked it up, he asked me if I wanted to go to dinner sometime and talk about my interests in business school. He said I'd find his views interesting. Well, of course you would. I mean, after all, he's a combination of Warren Buffett and the Oracle of Delphi. So, what'd you say about dinner? I acted like a schoolgirl. I would be so flattered. And then? Nothing for a day or two, and then I had something else to take back for him, and he just lit up and asked me in. Then he said, how about tomorrow night for that dinner? I said I'd be thrilled. Then he says, we probably shouldn't say anything about this around here. People might get the wrong idea. I wondered how he was going to hide this from his little cupcake. I actually think it was HR he was more worried about. Apparently, the other partners made some rules after Charlie got together with Barry. They didn't want to get sued. Oh, well, heaven forbid that they'd have to hire lawyers, no quick profits in that. We're gonna need a minute, thank you. So? So, when he said people might get the wrong idea, I just looked at him and said, wrong idea about what, Charlie? I'd never called him by his first name before. He just stared at me for a second. I'm not sure he could speak. Oh, this is wonderful. I mean, I knew the minute I saw you that you were perfect for this. Okay, so then what happened at dinner? Where did you go? Here. Here? <laughs> no. I almost laughed out loud when he told me where to meet him. We sat right over there. Hmm. That bastard. We celebrated our 25th anniversary here. So was he charming. Very. Expensive wine. Plenty of stories about how he started off in business, his big deals. Mm. Where did I figure in that? Any mention of me? Uh, only when he was complaining. About what? Well, I asked him about his family, just to make conversation, and that's when the divorce came up. It's all the usual, Rochelle. I hear it all the time from men about their wives. Sometimes they get so wrapped up in it so desperate for sympathy, they never get around to sex. How their wives shop and demand and have no conception of the pressure of their jobs. I held his fucking life together. No, he granted you that, actually. He said you're a wonderful mother. Did he? And so, what went wrong? You don't need to hear all that, Rochelle. Oh, I don't? Oh, no, please. Tell me, what did he say? You know, all the usual vocabulary. Shrill, self-centered, constantly complaining, nothing's ever good enough, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Sasquatch would have been a better wife. It wasn't quite that severe. He did take some blame. Said that he got too wrapped up in work. Yeah. Well, he got too wrapped up in Barry's legs. I need a Cosmo. So where did you go when you left here? My place. He offered to drive me home. I invited him up for a nightcap. I didn't leave much to chance at that point. I sat so close to him in the sofa, I was practically in his lap. He took the bait. Quickly. So how did that go? Apparently, he's learned a few things in the past three years. Great. So when did you see him again? I didn't. I didn't have to. When we were done, he sat at the end of the bed with his back to me, told me how beautiful and wonderful I was and that he wasn't ever going to see me again. Wait a minute. A, a one-night stand? For all that money? I thought you said mission accomplished. Don't listen, Michelle. He told me that he thought by being with me, he was going to feel better. 
but that he didn't. He said he was still miserable and that he was going to be miserable for a long time. I, I don't understand. He told me she left me. She just left. She told me that it wasn't going to work in the long run, packed her bags one night and left. Just left. Who? Who? Barry, the assistant. Apparently she took off a couple of weeks ago. Met some young guy at the firm she works at. And then when he told me again she just left, he started crying. There he was, naked, sitting at the end of my bed. A little pot-bellied, a little bald, and he sobbed like a baby. He cried. You got exactly what you wanted, Rochelle. He cried for her? Yeah, you wanted him to cry. No. No, I wanted him to cry for you. For, for us. For my plan. Don't you understand? No. No, I'm afraid I don't. Yeah. He never cried about me. He never, ever cried about me. So, why is a handsome guy like you speed dating? Low-hanging fruit. How descriptive. What is this connection that you think we have? Think? We have. I guess that's what I'm looking for. I guess that's what everybody's looking for. Who is she? My friend, Vanessa. She's smart. I like smart women. She's smart, but not a rocket scientist. I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. Uh -oh. Would you like to see a rocket lift off? We're doing a test flight up at Vandenberg. That actually sounds like a lot of fun. Why don't I shut up and let you tell me something about yourself? I like listening to you talk. You have a beautiful voice. Good. Do me a favor. When you sit with Malcolm, don't seduce him. Why'd you uh, change your hair? Wigs can be very powerful. I mean, women wear them for so many reasons. Simplicity. You could rate me on a scale of one to ten. Definite one. Uh, on the one scale. <laughs> okay. To change their appearance, of course. To not be seen. To be someone other than who they are. To forget themselves. I am so horny. Vanessa. I am. A slut by any other name would act the same. <sighs> I'm making a complete ass out of myself, aren't I? You're not that promiscuous. What am I then? A free spirit. Idea. Oh no. 
moving on to something. Let's just say it doesn't work out and move on. It works for me. Not for me. Really? I'm getting just the opposite impression. Tell me what you see in me. A touch of desperation. Don't hold back. You try too hard. Anything else? You may want to cut down on the carbs. <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, I should just slap that guy in the face. Someone had to do it.